Well, hello, everyone, or a couple of us, I guess. I am Ida Chin. I am a PhD candidate at Caltech in mechanical engineering. And it's my pleasure to be a speaker here. And today what I'm going to talk about is a temporal scene understanding in robot assisted surgery using deep learning. So before anything else, a little bit about me. I am a PhD student in mechanical engineering uh, with a focus of robotics. I did my undergrad in Washington University in St. Louis, where I majored in biomedical engineering. And I have been working as an artificial intelligence software engineer intern at Intuitive Surgical, the maker of Da Vinci, the surgical robot, for over a year now, and as parallel to my PhD. And my focus is basically the artificial intelligence and machine learning applications in surgical robotics. So let's get started by talking about the basic premises of surgical robot. How can it help us? How can it make the patient's and the surgeon's life a little bit easier? So traditionally, back in many years ago, I guess, open surgeries are the primary way of doing surgeries, and it can be very hard on the patient by having big incisions and very long recovery time for them. Ever since minimally invasive surgery became a thing, and we know that the patient can benefit from it a lot by only having a couple of small incisions after their surgery because everything is minimally invasive with laparoscopic instruments. But this is very hard on the surgeon because the surgeon is operating still outside of the body and everything that they do, every gesture that they make have to be mimicked and mirrored. Essentially, they're going the opposite direction to which they want to go, which is very hard on them. It's very counterintuitive which means that the minimally invasive surgery uh, training for surgeons, the, train, uh, the learning curve is just steeper and longer in that sense. Now, surgical robot, for example, Da Vinci, uh, uses teleoperation. And essentially, teleoperation and robotics combine attempts to combine the best of both worlds. So based on the based on teleoperation, the surgeon sits at the surgeon council, which is separated from the patient side robot, and look into the endoscopic view from the headset or from the council and perform the surgery using master two master man manipulators, one on each hand. And then <clears throat> the gestures are then mimicked exactly by robot on the patient side manipul uh, patient side, so essentially the patient side manipulators. And this is how surgical, uh, surgical robot can help by making the gestures intuitive. The surgeon can move the same way that they want to go while also having that minimally invasive um, technique and benefits for the patient. Now, with the increase in computing powers, we can certainly extend the surgical capacity beyond teleoperation with the improvement in like this computing powers and softwares. And we're basically having a $2.5 million machine here that we're not, that we can uh, make better use of. And this is, we can develop many surgeon assisting functionalities from here. Now the prerequisite, a very important prerequisite for us, it's cool applications that uh, it's the temporal scene understanding, basically what is currently going on with the surgery. So currently, the robot-assisted surgery is purely teleoperation. So whatever the surgeon does as a counsel get mimicked uh, to the patient's side card exactly, and there's nothing else. Now, the next step, the applications can be user interface integration. They can provide adversary, uh, advisory information for the surgeons and even supervise autonomy for simple surgical tasks or surgical gestures. All of this, as I mentioned before, requires the knowledge of um, basically the awareness of the current surgical scene. To do that, we first want to realize that a surgical task, for example, suturing in this case, 
can be modeled as a list of the three states with transition probabilities between them. So for suturing, like once you position the needle tip, the next state would be to push the needle through the tissue. After that, you do pull in the suture with your other hand. And this is just how usually the suturing task goes. Now there can be variations, there could be different techniques. But uh, basically, the general idea of a finance state machine that describes a surgical task, a robot assisted surgical task is here. So uh, this state doesn't need to be a gesture performed by the surgeon. It can also be environmental changes. For example, this is uh, intraoperative ultrasound imaging. This is a very common task performed by da Vinci surgeons to use an ultra ultrasound probe to scan the underlying anatomical structure of the patient. And, uh, and in this case, the, when the probe is released, whether or not it is in the endoscopic view has nothing to do with the surgeon's gesture, but rather this is an observation of the current endoscopic environment. <clears throat> So the goal here, uh, our objective is to accurately segment and estimate this current state, whether or not, whether it's a gesture or uh, environmental change of this uh, robot assisted surgery subtasks. Now there are many challenges in it. For one, the duration of this state varies significantly from one to another. <clears throat> Grasping probe can take one split of a second. You just go, and then it's picked up. And, but when the probe is released, whether or not it's in endoscopic view, that can last 10 seconds or even half a minute. Additionally, we would have frequent state transitions because each of this, in this very dynamic surgical environment, everything changes very frequently and kind of spontaneous. And at last, we, have, we know that different states may have different representative visual and or kinematics features making them challenging to be recognized if, we only use, uh, if we're only using one stream of data, uh, of data versus using multiple types of input data. There are many data sources from, let's say, Da Vinci XI surgical system. For example, from the Surgeon Site Council, you will have the master manipulator kinematics. You can also log in the uh, system events, such as the surgeon head in or head out. And from the vision card, you will have the endoscopic vision. Patient side card, you will have the patient side manipulator's kinematics. So we can take good use of all of this by incorporating all of the types of input data. <clears throat> We can put as uh, we can put this data into good use by incorporating deep learning into uh, the state estimation of surgical tasks. For example, here the inside of the patient's abdomen. Let's say it's a very complicated environment, environment to say the least. And instead of concatenating, uh, instead of using the raw 1280 by 1024 by three raw image, which is very noisy, and you can't learn much in, uh, unless you have 100,000 videos like this. We can use a com uh, convolutional neural network, or CNN, such as this one, the VG16, to extract and encode the visual information for more efficient and richer in, uh, feature, uh, feature, visual feature representation. Now we realize that we are dealing with time series data here. So if we're making the state estimation based only on this current frame, then the result is not going to be very flattering, which is why we need to understand the temporal behaviors in this time series data. The surgeon pushed the needle into the tissue after he picked up the needle. That's a sequence. You can't do it without having a needle in your hand. So with this recurrent neural network or RNN, we can learn the time series data's temporal dependencies and thus give us a better temporal understanding of the surgical subtasks. By incorporating multiple types of input data, we can significantly improve the surgical state recognition accuracy. In our password uh, presented at ICRA, International Conference of Robotics Automation 2020, we propose a unified surgical state estimation model we would like to call Fusion KVE, K as in kinematics, V as in vision, and E as in events, which achieves a frame-wise state estimation accuracy of up to 90%, which is 11% uh, better compared to the state-of-the-art models only using one streams of data, kinematics, or vision. We show a demo of our uh, model Fusion KVE at work here on the ultrasound imaging data. 
as we can see, this is still a very complicated and red scene. And in the bottom, we have the slider indicating the current state as estimated by fusion KVE comparing to the ground truth. Each color represents the state. Now we can notice here that the fin of the probe, the ultrasound probe, is getting immersed into the tissue, into the organ. And the identifiable visual feature is lost, which is why the current surgical scene as seen by Fusion KVE is that the probe is not visible. And now the fin is back visible, and now we change to state two. This is because the visual features are more predominant between state one and two, whereas for this current uh, surgical state that is carrying the probe to the tissue surface. And now we are getting into the sweeping cases where the kinematics, as we can see here, is more predominant and recognizable. It has a recognizable pattern. So this gave us a more comprehensive view as to different states have different durations and different representative visual kinematics or event features. As we just saw, between state one and two, whether the probe is visible in the endoscopic view, the vision is predominant in that case. It has a higher weighting factor. Whereas when you're doing sweeping, you're doing this very distinctive motion. And then the kinematics, it's more predominant. In conclusion, since I'm a little bit running out of time, the temporal understanding of surgical scene during robot assisted surgery is a very important prerequisite to autonomous surgical tasks and many other applications. And the incorporations of all available data types, since we have this um, amazing surgical robot that we can take good use of, it can improve the surgical state estimations robustness, especially in the real world scenario where the environment is very dynamic and the surgeon doesn't exactly does what us engineers tell them what to do. And in future directions, for one, we can improve further improve the surgical state estimation and prediction accuracies. And on the other hand, we can already incorporate this temporal scene understanding as the perception module to applications such as autonomous surgical tasks. I would like to thank both Intuitive Surgical and Caltech, my colleagues and my advisors for their help. And this concludes my presentation, if anybody have any questions.